So a singular value decomposition takes a matrix A and decompose it into the product of three matrices. So U and uh, usually we call it sigma and V transpose. The form here looks a little bit like eigenvalue decomposition, right? But there is a critical difference is that first of all U and V are not the same matrix. They are different. And two is that the V has a transpose instead of an inverse. And three, in eigenvalue decomposition, the, the uh, U and U inverse, they can be pretty arbitrary matrices. But here, U and V has R to be orthonormal matrices. Okay, so in practice, this, and if you remember, orthonormal matrices represent rotations, rotations and reflections. So in practice, what this does is that it takes the matrix, it rotate it from the left and rotate it from the right, so that you get a diagonal matrix sigma. So this, both U and V has to be orthonormal, and the sigma has to be diagonal. Okay. <clears throat> So this is what we have in singular value decomposition. It is very useful in identifying the null spaces of the matrix A. Why is that? So let's imagine A, in, like in our application, is a, a matrix that is, uh, that is short. It's shorter than its, uh, its width, right? So if A is like that, what we get is a orthonormal matrix U, which has to be the same dimension of which dimension of A? By the way, orthonormal matrix is always uh, is always uh, square, all right? So so U has to be the same as which dimension? Same as the rows, right? So U is a smaller matrix, and sigma and uh, V. So V is another orthonormal matrix and the size has to be the same as which dimension of A? Columns. The columns, yes. So sigma has to have exactly the same shape as A, right? And sigma has to be diagonal. What does that mean for the sparsity pattern of sigma? So the sigma is going to be a bunch of entries along the diagonal and zero everywhere else, including the portion of the sigma on the right where the diagonal cannot reach right okay so now we know what the form of sigma is and particularly the right hand side of sigma if the matrix is uh, a short and fat matrix then we know what sigma is and then we left we right multiply v so this is v transpose if we right multiply v on both size of this equality, we get AV equal to U times sigma. Because V is an orthonormal matrix, V transpose times V is identity, right? So that cancels the V transpose. Okay? And <coughs> in particular, this equation has to be true column-wise. Okay, so every column of the matrix AV has to be equal to the corresponding column of U sigma. And if you know how to do matrix multiplication, and if you remember sigma is this matrix, right? There is a bunch of zeros on the right. So if you multiply U with this matrix, do you know what is the U sigma on these corresponding columns? Think of matrix matrix multiplication, how do you do that? Zero. Zeros, because you multiply U with the corresponding entry, uh, corresponding columns of sigma to get the corresponding columns of U sigma, right? So U sigma is a matrix with a bunch of columns that may be filled. I don't know, right? These are non, this can be non-zeros, but there is an entire zero on the right-hand side. So that's what U is. Uh, that's what uh, u sigma is. And that means if I multiply A with the corresponding columns of V, I'm going to get this bunch of zeros. Okay. 
That means I have the null space of A. They are exactly the columns of V corresponding to the excess columns of A, right? So this is why we are in MATLAB trying to use SVD to identify what is the null space of, of this matrix A. Okay. 